those hands together, everybody. We got time to clap our hands. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on, clap like you came to preach. I said, put those hands together like you came to have some church here tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Come on and lift those hands and give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on and glorify him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's it. Come on, praise him. Praise him. He's been the good God. And it's greatly to it. Oh, no, no. I see your hands. I don't hear your voices. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, you ought to open your mouth and give him a praise. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, can't nobody do you like Jesus can. Hallelujah. I said, can't nobody do you like Jesus can. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Let's thank God for that testimony tonight. Let's thank God for Sister Porter tonight. Amen. And to this wonderful, wonderful host of ministry and to all of you, my father's children, God bless you. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. I'm just grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be where the saints are. Amen. I'm glad that God loaned us to life another day. Amen. Didn't have to do so, but he did. And we praise him for it. Amen. I thank and I honor God for his goodness and his grace and his continued mercies that he shows to us. I thank God, amen, that I've been saved all day. Oh, and dare I say it, dare I say it? And no evil have I done. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell him, listen, he, a good friend of mine called me today. He said, you know, he said, God is a keep. I said, yes, he is. But he ain't holding nobody against their will. And I told him, I'm his child. I'm not his hostage. Amen. Because I got a mind to be kept. I, 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 I don't know if there's anybody here under duress. Amen. But I'm here because I want to be here. Amen. I'm here because I tried it one day. And I got hooked. Amen. Y'all ain't saying that. I said, I got hooked. I'm I'm hooked on them now, and I, 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 it don't make sense going nowhere because I can't do no better than what I got now. Amen, amen. I mean, I'm like Peter. If I leave you, where in the world can I go? Amen. Who's going to do for me what he can do for me? Who's going to hold us and lift us and encourage us? Hey, just look at somebody and tell them, I can't do no better than what I got now. I just... Amen. I struck it rich. <laughs> when I said yes to the Lord, I won. <laughs> Lord, y'all ain't saying it on. I said, when I said yes to him, I won. Amen. I struck it rich. Amen. And I can't do no better. Can't do no better than what I got now. Amen. That's why... I, 
I'm not going to let the devil uh, coerce me out of here. I'm not going to let him run me out of here. He can't gossip me out of here. He, he, boy, y'all ain't saying nothing on Tuesday. He, he can't embarrass me out of here. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. I'm here till I die. And I'm glad I'm in here with some folk that understand what I'm talking about. Hey, he can't embarrass us out of here. He can't run us out of here. Hey Amen. He can't coerce us out of here. Look at somebody and tell them I'm here till I die. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, sir. We all fighting the same devil. Amen. Amen. We all fighting the same rascal. And what he try to use against one, he'll try to use against the other. That, that, that's the reason why, amen. I, I'm not talking about you. I'm praying for you. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I'm praying for you. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I know, amen, that there are some things that, that we all have to deal with. Amen. And I believe that God is able to strengthen each and every one of us. And I pray, amen, that every time I come to the house of the Lord, that the word that I speak strengthens you, amen, in your walk with God. I, 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 I'm like David. Saul got mad at David and started killing priests. He wiping them out. He just killing everybody. And one of them ran to David one day and said, listen, he, he, he got him. He got him. He, he killed him because he, he heard that you were that. And David said, listen, the same one that's after you is after me. But if you stick with me, you'll be all right. I come to tell you the same one that's after you after me stick with me you're going to be alright because I'm going to give you the strength that comes from the word uh, look at somebody and tell them neighbor there is a word from the Lord amen and tell somebody and I am a lover of the word of God amen I love the word of God tonight I brought mine you got yours come on hold that power up thank God because everything else is going down. Everything but what? Everything but the wood. You really believe that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're, we're at, a, at, a, at a, a very serious point. Amen. Where people are losing confidence in the word of God. Amen. Losing confidence in, in the word of God. Amen. People don't see the need. To build their lives on this. You listen to people now, they tell you, I was, a friend of mine sent me a text last night. Somebody was on talking about if the church is going to survive, what all we have to do and, and how we have to take down and, and stop doing this if you want millennials to come to your church. If, if you want them to come, you can't do this. You can't do that. And stop doing this if you want them to come. And I told him, I said, that's good if you just want them to get to church. But I'm trying to get them to heaven. That, that's the problem. We, we, we just trying to get them to church. Our job ain't just to get people to church. Our job is to get them to heaven. Boy, now y'all done got quiet again. And, and you can't tell God, amen, how to be holy. Uh, stop preaching this and stop doing this and, and stop the, if y'all want to get them to church, stop. You can't tell God how to be holy. Amen. And I'm not just trying to get them to church. I'm trying to get them to heaven. And if they go into heaven, they're going to have to humble down and live right like every other generation that ever came before them. Because there's only one gospel, but it fits the whole world. Amen. Amen. And in times like this, you know, I, I, I've been really toying around with the idea, amen, of doing a series on, on Christian culture. Because we don't, we don't really see that, amen, even among those that are, that are in church, amen. Christianity means nothing to people beyond church membership. And the devil is saying just be a Christian in the four walls of the church. But now don't bring your Christianity out of here because don't nobody out here want to hear it. We don't appreciate that. But he called us to advance the kingdom agenda. That means we've got to invade this world with the power of God Amen. And create a culture. Amen. The culture of the kingdom. 
not the culture of this world. Like so many people are falling prey to now. Amen. That's why I tell you, if you really want to know who God is, get in the pages of the word of God. You, you can't look at what people are talking about. And, and, and I'm not against being on TV. We're on TV. Amen. But now, besides just believing that because people got enough money to pay for a television broadcast, that means that they're holy and they write and God speaks to them. Listen, it don't, it don't take being holy to be on TV. It just take money. If you want to know whether a person is holy or not, it's not whether or not they have a television broadcast. It's whether or not their lives and their preaching, their teaching, whether it is lining up with the word of God or not. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is whether or not we're lining up, line upon line, precept upon, uh, whether or not we're living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Outside of that, we're lost. We don't stand a chance in this world of pleasing God if we don't build on the foundation of the word. The book of Daniel, Daniel the fourth chapter, I, I want to call your attention to a familiar passage of scripture, amen, for those of you that may be new to church, maybe you've never heard, amen, this particular passage, but it is it is one that I think is, is worth committing to memory. Amen. Because God said, I am the, the Lord thy God and I don't change. That means that whatever disposition, if you can call it that, he, he had years ago, he is still that same God now. Amen. He does not change. And in spite of what people are trying to get us to believe, the God of the New Testament is the same God of the Old Testament. Amen. Oh, no, he don't do that kind of stuff. Listen, yes, he does. Yes, he does. In 2021, God is still a consuming fire. Amen. People don't believe it. It's going to take him opening up the ground and swallowing some folk before. Amen. Some of these people stop playing with him. Amen. Because he's the same. He, he hasn't changed. He's still holy. He still requires holiness. He's still, amen. He's still angry with the wicked, the Bible said, every day. Amen. And he's still calling all, amen, and requiring us to repent. Daniel, the fourth chapter. I want to call your attention to the 28th through the 37th verses. That's Daniel chapter number four, verse 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37. Amen. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Read what the Bible says. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. Uh huh. At the end of 12 months. At the he, end of 12 months. He walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Uh huh. The king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house that of the kingdom? I have built for the house of the kingdom. By the might of my power? By the might of my power. Didn't I tell you? Amen, son. It's not by power nor by might. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. And here's Nebuchadnezzar still giving accolades to his own power and to his own might. Read. And for the honor of my majesty. And for the honor of my majesty. And you've got to be careful because there are people that are do the same thing now. Amen. Uh, education, you know, that, that's a real enemy for some people. You have some that are, that are giving accolades to their education. They're giving accolades to their, uh, uh, to their mental abilities. They're doing a whole lot of, a whole lot of uh, praising, but it's not really praising God. It's, it's praising their power and their might praising the fact that they capitalized on opportunities and as if that's what got them to where they are. you got to be careful to always give God. The, look at somebody and just tell them, give God the glory. Mm, read. While the word was in the king's mouth. While the word was in his mouth. There fell a voice from heaven. Uh-huh. Saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. to thee it is spoken. To thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The kingdom is now departed from thee. Read. 
And they shall drive thee from men, mm -hmm. and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You're going to dwell with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Lord, have mercy. And seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Uh -huh. The same hour was the thing And the Bible fulfilled. says, verse 33, the same hour was that thing fulfilled. Upon see, Nebuchadnezzar. See, the thing about it is sometimes it, it, it takes God a while to start moving. See, and then people are emboldened because, hey man, God let them get, it looked like they got by with some stuff. And sometimes God don't just snatch you down like that. But then but the problem is once God starts moving, it don't take long for your whole house to come tumbling down. Read. And he was driven from men. And he was driven from men. And did eat grass as oxen. Now this is the king now eating grass. And his body. His body. Was wet with the dew of heaven. Uh-huh. Till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. Lord, and his nails. His hair grew out like eagle's feathers. And his nails. And his nails. Like bird's claws. Like bird claws. I see folk with them claws. Up. Now let me hush. Long and pointy like vampire teeth. Just. Anyway, read. And at the end of the days. At the end of the day. I, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. Lifted up mine eyes. I lifted heaven, up mine eyes. Unto heaven. Unto heaven. And mine understanding. That's when my understanding. Returned unto me. Uh -huh. And I blessed the most high. And I praised and honored him. I learned how to praise and honor God. That liveth forever. Because he lives forever. Uh -huh. whose, whose dominion uh -huh. is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. His kingdom is from generation to generation. I'm king and I'll, I'll, I'll be gone one day. But his kingdom endures from one generation to to the next read and all the inhabitants of the earth uh -huh. are reputed as nothing mm. and he doeth according to his will he does whatever he wants to do they used to sing a song that said he's sovereign yes, he yes, he God can do whatever he wants to do and can't nobody say nothing about what God does read in the army of heaven uh -huh. and among the inhabitants of the earth. Read. And none can stay his hand. Can't nobody keep him from doing his will. Or say unto him, uh -huh. what doest thou? Who gonna check God on what he decides to do? Read. At the same time, uh -huh. my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. Mm. And my counselors and my Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty. Excellent majesty. Was added unto was me. Was added unto me. That stuff that he was trying to get on his own. When he humbled himself. God just added it to him. Read. Now. Now. I Nebuchadnezzar. I Nebuchadnezzar. Praise uh -huh. and extol and extol and honor and honor the King of Heaven, the King of Heaven, all whose works are truth mm. and his judge his ways judgment. Uh huh. And those though hear this now, hear this those that walk in pride that walk in pride. He is able. He and can I say willing. Mm -hmm. to a base now read that again read, read, read that again now now I Nebuchadnezzar, I Nebuchadnezzar he praise, is, praise and extol and extol and honor, and honor the king of the heaven king of heaven all whose works are truth uh -huh. and his ways, his ways judgment. judgment and and those hear this hear this sons and daughters those that walk that walk in pride in pride he is able He's to a base. Able. And again, he's willing to a base. That word a base means to bring down or to make low. And for everybody that walks in pride, 
he is able to bring you down. I want to talk tonight about when God humbles a man. Just, just look at somebody and tell them, humble yourself. Humble yourself because you don't want God to have to humble. Isn't that, isn't that what the Bible said? Amen. He says, humble yourself. Amen. And then God will exalt you in, in due time. One thing that you've got to learn how to do is respect the place that God has ordained for you and always honor and praise God, amen, above everything and everybody because he ultimately is responsible for everything that happens to us in this life. Amen. The Bible said all, every good gift and every, every perfect gift, come. y'all know the Bible says that? From above, isn't that what he said? From the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither in his shadow of turning. Everything that you enjoy, everything that is gained to you, I mean, I mean real gain, amen, everything that is good and profitable, the Bible said it comes from God, amen, who's able to give to every man. And you've got to always be reminded, amen, and to be mindful to keep God in a position of honor. Look at somebody again and say, when God humbles a man. Now, don't close your Bibles. We'll walk a little tonight. Amen. One of the most dangerous sins is the sin of pride. Amen. Amen. It, it's, it's dangerous because pride is like covetousness amen it leads to so many other sins amen you've got to watch it amen pride never stays dormant and the thing about pride is amen you can look at somebody and not see it, it, it's not like some of those some of those other sins that people readily wear amen on their shoulder and you can identify it amen but you've got to be careful because sometimes pride can even hide as humility Boy, y'all done got quiet. I used to hear Bishop Cannon say it all the time. Some folk proud about being humble. Hey Amen. They, they're trying to have contests on who's the most humble. Hey Amen. I walk more humbly than you. And if, if you let them, they'll even brag about their own humility. Hey Amen. But pride is something that is rooted in not only the mind, but it's in the heart of a man. Amen. And we see it. Amen. Pride was actually the first sin. It happened even before. Amen. Lucifer acted on his rebellion. According to the word of God, pride was what was found in his heart. Amen. He said because of his beauty. Amen. And because of all that God had given him, the Bible says he was proud. Amen. And pride was what caused him now. Amen. Even in his mind before he rebelled uh, uh, to think more loftily of himself than he should. Amen. So much so that he even desired to sit in the hill of the Lord. Amen. He always did want a throne. And do you know? Amen. He still wants a throne. Amen. That's what all of this is about he is still looking to be worshipped he is still looking to rob God of his glory amen and what Satan would love to do is to put you in a place where you exalt yourself amen in a manner that is not right or proper amen and you've tried to finish what it is he started many 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 eons ago and you've got to realize amen that pride if it's not dealt with will inevitably lead to a time of reckoning with God because the Bible declares that God will abase or he will bring low those who will not make that concession amen if you persist in pride believe me child of God amen God's got a way of bringing you down and I don't care how invincible we feel amen it doesn't matter how invincible we appear it doesn't matter amen how strong we are we can be smart amen and nobody around us can match wits with us but when it comes to God God has a a way of bringing us down amen where nobody else could when you look at the word pride amen it means to exalt yourself it means literally to be arrogant or to have an unhealthily elevated view 
of oneself, one's abilities, or of one's possessions. And you'd be surprised what people are proud about. Amen. It doesn't take much. Amen. That's the nature of pride. It don't even take much. You don't even have to be a millionaire. Amen. For the spirit of pride to start creeping into your heart. Amen. You know, you've got people now. They're so enamored with this material world. Amen. That a new car is enough to blow their mind. Amen. You've got people now that a few dollars in their pocket. Amen. Is enough to blow their mind. You've got people now. Amen. Because of the shoes that they have on their feet. They have an elevated sense of importance. Amen. Just by the, these meager material things that people can possess. Amen. You've got folk now that are so proud. Amen. That they're even proud about the way that they look. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. People think they so cute now and so handsome. Amen. That everybody else is jealous of. I've never seen a day. Amen. Like the one we're in now. Amen. When people are so proud. Amen. That they think everybody else wants to be like them. Everybody else wants to be them. Amen. That they can't have nothing without everybody else in the world. Amen. Nah, child, just a bunch of haters. Listen. Nobody is hating on you like that. Amen. I can guarantee you. Amen. That in many people's minds, nobody thinks of them. Amen. With any level of importance the way they think of themselves. And you've got to be careful. Look at somebody and tell them stop looking at yourself. Amen. People are now turning so inward. Amen. And they're becoming so prideful. Amen. That now everybody is angry because I got a new suit. Listen, y'all ain't the only suit they selling. Oh, y'all ain't say, girl, I got my hair done and she started acting funny with me. Oh, stop. Oh, now, don't make me. Hey, man, come on now. Really? Hey, man, this the kind of stuff we proud about now? Hey, man, that's, oh, God, I'm, I'm, let's move on. Hey, man, that's the kind of stuff that's getting us elevated in our mind? Come on now. Hey, man, nobody is looking at us like that. That's the enemy. Hey, man, trying to cause us, hey, man, to look at ourselves and brag and boast in the things that we we possess, amen, as if that stuff has any merit at all. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, nothing that we have down here is worth bragging about. Amen. The Bible said where mouth can come in, amen, and, and corrupt, amen, where thieves can come in and steal. This stuff can't be our treasure. Amen. You can brag about a car today. Amen. Go out there and hit us icy patch or, amen, a patch of water car slide off the freeway upside down. Listen, and you bragging about a car. Hey man, they got a dented in roof. Come on now. Hey man, our houses. Hey man, they could burn down at any time. And this is the kind of stuff. Hey man, that the devil is courting us with pride. The devil is a liar. Hey man, the Bible said if anybody's going to brag, hey man, don't brag about the stuff you got. Hey man, don't brag about your education. Don't brag about your shape and your looks and how cute you are. Hey man, when you left the beauty shop, he said if you're going to brag and boast about anything let him brag about the fact that he knows me because I'm the only thing in your life God said worth bragging about look at somebody and tell them maybe if you're going to boast boast in the Lord because he's the only thing that you have worth talking about don't talk about your dress because that ain't the only one they made don't talk about your house because somebody got something bigger than that amen don't talk about your car amen because they could hook it up to a tow truck in the morning and snatch it right out your driveway or but if you're going to brag, brag about something that the world didn't give you and something that the world can't take away. If you're going to boast about anything, boast about the fact that God looked down from heaven and saw you in the middle of a mess and loved you enough to save you. Oh, y'all ain't said and don't brag about your ability. Brag about the love of God. Amen. Pride will get you messed up. Pride will get you, amen, brought low. Pride will get you a base. And you've got some people now, amen, they haven't learned this lesson yet. So you know what's going to happen. They're going to keep going high and then come back low. Amen. Some of them going to go back up. They're going to keep coming down. Amen. Because God's word is right. Those that will exalt themselves, God said, I'll bring you down. Can I tell you, child of God, the way up is down. You hear what I tell you? Amen. If you want to go high in God, humble yourself. If you want to be successful in life, humble yourself. Amen. Depend on God to do it. Because as long as you think you're smart enough, God will let you have it. You know what God will do? God will stand back. Amen. 
Amen. And he'll let you wrestle with life long enough for you to understand that without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. It is therefore the responsibility of every man to always remember the goodness and the graciousness of God and that all that we are and all that we have comes from the hand of the Lord. Isn't that what he says in what is that, uh, Second Chronicles 29 and 14? He says, all things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given unto thee. Even when it comes down to your tithe and your offering, amen, you've got people bragging, amen, about how much money they put in church. You ain't doing and big to God. Amen. Because God said it is only out of what I gave you that you turn around and give to me. That's why he asked the question, will you rob God? How have we robbed you? In tithe and offering. How did I rob you in tithe and offering? I didn't even give it to you. That's the problem. You stole what was mine. God said it's my money. I just put it in your pocket. Hey, how y'all ain't saying it? And that's what God want to know. Amen. Do you love me enough to give me back my stuff? Amen. Because you got some folks so full of pride. Hey, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Hey, amen. That even when they give God back the money he put in their pocket. Hey, amen. They're so lifted up and you've got people now. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hey, amen. They're just so boisterous. Hey, amen. They're looking down at everybody else and don't even understand that's never what it's about. Jesus said there was a woman. Hey, amen. That gave two mites and she gave more than everybody because she didn't give out of her abundance. She gave even out of her lack. Amen. And God says that woman really gave an offering. And you got people now. Amen. They're not giving to give God the glory. They're giving to be seen of men. Now that don't mean, amen, that you ought not be seen giving. Amen. Because Jesus saw that woman giving. Amen. But she wasn't given to be seen. Oh God. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? There is a difference between being seen given. Amen. And giving to be seen. And so when we We've got to understand now is that everything that we have in our hands, amen, everything that we possess, it comes from God. Look at some man and tell them, neighbor, God did it. God did it. Amen. It was God that gave me the wits. It was God that gave me the intelligence. It was God that gave me the strength. Amen. It was God that gave me the know-how. It was God that put it in my hands. It was God that imparted the resources. And it was God that blessed me when I did right by what he gave me that means that through every phase of the process it is all God that's what you've got to remember it's all God through every phase of the process it is God to exalt yourself means that the glory that would go to God is now placed in your lap and you are credited amen and you are crediting your own ability amen but look at Deuteronomy you got to get that Deuteronomy 4 and 24 amen I want you to follow me through some of these scriptures because because you need to see what the Bible says Deuteronomy 4 and 24 for the Lord thy God. For the Lord thy God. Is a consuming fire. Is a consuming fire. Even a jealous God. Hear this. God says my jealousy is a burning jealousy. That means that he's so serious about it. He can't stand, amen, you giving his glory to anybody else. He's a consuming fire because our God is a jealous God. His jealousy is ignited. It's a hot jealousy, amen. And God said, that's how I view my glory. When you talk about glory, God says, you can't give it to nobody else because I won't allow you to give it to anybody else he's a consuming fire you know what that means that means God is coming for his glory when he does something good in your life God is coming for his glory when he blesses you you've got to be careful to always give him glory because God is coming after his glory amen and if you don't give it you know what I found out about God you try to glorify something else amen or even glorify yourself God will show you amen he'll bring you down amen isn't that what happened even when they try to serve other gods God would attack the other gods amen because he wouldn't give his glory to them and you've got to be careful amen because whatever it is that you put up and extol amen whatever it is that you elevate to a level of undue importance God will come after that 
keep talking about how good your job is and never mention how good your God is. God will come, boy, y'all done got quiet here. He, he, he'll come after whatever it is that you're trying, amen, to elevate that thing that you glorify. He said, I'm a jealous God. And he's not going to sit by, amen, after your credit was as bad as it was. Amen. You done borrowed money from everybody. And then you get that house. You get that car. And then you start talking about your job. And you never even mention the fact that God, amen, blessed you in spite of your mess ups and in spite of, amen, your lack of wisdom. You keep talking. You know what God will do? God will come after his glory. Get me Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. That is my name. God said, that's my name. And my glory. And my glory. Will I not give to another? Not to your mother. Not to your degree. Not to your, whoever you want to call them, the ones you can always get money from and, and borrow from. He said, no, no, I won't give my glory to anybody, I am the, that's my name and my glory will I not give to another. God said it won't happen. And if you try it, I'll still come for my glory. If I got to run down everything that you trust in. If I have to kick all your crutches out from under your arm. Boy, y'all done got quiet. God said, I'm coming for my glory. You can talk about them, you can brag about them. But just as sure as you set them up, God said, I'm going to knock them down. Read. Neither my praise to graven images. Neither my praise to graven images. Can you imagine being so tremendously blessed by God and then turning around and crediting yourself with what you got? After God blessed you, amen, in spite of yourself. Because let's be honest, let's be real. Some of us messed up our lives. We messed up our credit. We messed up our good name. We messed up relationships with people. We messed up jobs and we did all of that. But look at us when we came to God. Amen. God straightened out the mishaps of our lives. And look at us in spite of all the stuff that we did through a lack of wisdom. Amen. A lack of resolve. Then look at how God had brought us now. Amen. We haven't uh, gone hungry. We're not starving. Uh, Y'all ain't standing here. Hey Amen. You don't have to walk. Hey Amen. You are oh God. You got air conditioning now. Hey Amen. You can roll your wind up in the summertime. And you mean to tell me after all that God has to, you going to credit your own self? God said, I bring you down and all you got to do is remember when you didn't have it as good as you got it now. Amen. Some of y'all remember that summertime. You rolled down all your windows. Amen. Didn't have no, no such thing as no air conditioning in your car. And now that God done blessed us, we letting that cause us to walk in a spirit of pride. Boy, y'all ain't saying that. And you know what? Get me. I was thinking about it the other day. We've got so many people that have forgotten where they come from. We look at other people and we say stuff now like, I couldn't do that. And don't even realize that used to be. Boy, y'all ain't saying nothing. That used to be you. Oh, I can never drive a car with a different color door on it. That used to, boy, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Hey, man, how did you get so lifted up? Hey, man, that now you can look down and say, I'll never do that. I'll never. Can I tell you something? If it wasn't for the Lord on your side, you would do whatever it took to survive. Don't you sit up here and talk about what you wouldn't drive. And I wouldn't live in them apartments. Hey, man, if you're facing either sleeping in a park with the stars over your head, you'll live wherever you can live. Can I Talk to somebody here. You've got to understand what it means to be blessed by God. You've got to remember the kind of meals you used to eat. So now that you can go out to eat, don't you let that cause you to get lifted up. Because God will take you right back to the days when you had to set the beans on. Oh God, before you left work. He, oh, could I talk to somebody here? He'll take you right back to those days when y'all were cutting hamburgers in half. Can I talk to you? You better humble yourself and remember where God brought you from. I wish I could get about 78 of you to look at somebody and tell them don't forget to remember. Don't you forget to remember. Amen. That used to be us. 
Amen. Going to the gas station, getting 75 cents worth of gas. That used to be us. Well, y'all getting quiet now. And now that you can put your card in there, you looking down on everybody else. The devil is alive. You know what God will do? God will embarrass you. God will let your card decline. Oh, y'all ain't sinning. You looking down on a man with 75 cents. God will let you stand in front of that man with 75 cents. And let your card decline over and over and over. And he'll step right up to the counter. 75 cents, please. Honey, he'll go on and get him some gas. And leave you standing there with nothing in your tank. You better learn how to praise God for every blessing he's bestowed, for everything that he gave you. If you can pay your rent, you ought to give God the glory. If you can pay your car note, you ought to give God the glory. If you can go to the grocery store and get whatever you want and don't have to get what's on the list, don't get prideful. Be thankful. saying nothing. Don't you act bougie. Hey Amen. Just because you can go to the beauty shop now. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because that was a time y'all getting quiet here. When your mama sat you in the kitchen huh? and had that straight to comb on the stove. Huh? And you come to church with Vaseline all over your burns. Huh? And look at you now that you done got the people hair hanging on your shoulder. You're going to come to church and elevate yourself. The devil is alive. God will let you shout that stuff right out on the floor. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying Come to church acting like you something. You ain't nothing without God. Look at somebody tell them it's all God. I didn't do this. This is this is God. not your work ethic it's not your education it's not your lineage it's not your mental prowess and let me say this and it ain't luck <laughs> what that ain't luck look at somebody tell them I ain't lucky I'm blessed oh God y'all ain't said I didn't just get here turn up hey man no I didn't just turn up I'm blessed this ain't luck the universe ain't had nothing to do with this I've been blessed by the hand of God and I'm supposed to chalk all my blessings up to luck I don't know how it happened I guess I, guess I, just, I just got lucky I don't ever want nobody that's been blood bought and blood washed to walk around using that word luck. Lord have mercy. Can I tell you, I plan on rebuking you openly. If I ever hear, hey man, you talking about luck. Don't you ever go around here talking about luck. God said, I ain't giving my glory to another. You ain't giving your glory to luck. You didn't wasn't lucky in that you woke up this morning. You wasn't lucky in that you recovered from COVID. Hey man, that ain't have nothing to do with luck except the Lord keep the city. The watchman that watch watching. That. I wish I could find somebody, look at somebody and tell them it was all God. It was it was, it was all God. Lord, let me hasten tonight. This is the work of God that reigns on the just <laughs> as well as the unjust. Yeah, God, God, God. Hey, man, he reigns on saints and sinners. Boy, y'all getting quiet here. It, 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 it raining outside? Everybody go out there without an umbrella, get wet. Amen. The just, the unjust, the righteous, the unrighteous, everybody. God is good. And, and listen, God don't only, only smile on, on, on us. Amen. The Bible said it's, it's the goodness of the Lord that leads to repentance. See, when, when people out there realize that God, even before I got saved, bullets flying past your head and and, 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 and folk behind you got shot and you don't even know how that bullet mixed you oh God. he didn't start being good when you got sick he was good to you before you had sense enough to know that it was his hand that was maneuvering you that was guiding you y'all ain't saying nothing here put you in the passenger seat and the driver died driving your car and all 
God. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. God didn't just start being good to you. He's been good to you. That's the reason why you have every reason to serve him. Even if you ain't saved. He's been good enough to you. That's why the Bible said everything that hath breath can praise the Lord. And folks said, he made such a controversial statement. How did he make no controversial statement? I said, everybody can praise the Lord. Isn't that what the Bible said? Everything that had breath can praise the Lord. If a sinner want to come to church and lift their hands and praise God that they made it another day, they got because it was God that did it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They can't stop me praise because the Father seeking worshipers. Amen. But now, if they almost had an accident and they almost died, they ain't got to wait till they get saved to say, God, you're the only one brought me out of this car. If it hadn't have been you, I'd have died. That's praise to God. Can I talk to somebody here? Everything that got breath can praise him because he's the one that's giving him breath. Get me. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. Psalm 75, verse 6 and verse 7. For promotion. For promotion. Cometh neither from the east. Hear this. Hear this. It don't come from the east. Nor from the west. Doesn't come from the west. Nor from the south. Nor from the south. But God is the judge. Oh. Uh-huh. Read. He put it down one. He puts down one. And set it up another. And sets up another. So you only a manager because... Look at you, and you gonna get full of pride because you're a supervisor? And you don't even have an office, they just put your desk in the middle of the floor and you sitting in the middle of the floor full of pride. The Bible said God sets, he sets one up and he pulls somebody down. That means that it's all God. Whether you're promoted, whether you get a raise, boy, y'all ain't saying nothing to it, 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 It's God. That, and so if it's God, then who deserves the glory? And what happens if you don't give him his glory? God humbles a man. I don't care how far you go in life. Let me say this. I don't care how far we go in ministry. Mm -hmm. Because I'm finding out now you have people that are so full of pride. And it's not hard to let the devil slip in like that. that, that that's why the Bible says you, 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 you have to be careful not to give place to the devil. You can't let him because the devil will come in after you preach a good sermon and folk patting you on your back. Oh man, I ain't never heard that point you brought out. You done brought out some, oh man, I'm telling you, I see that in a whole new light and then here it go. You going out now that the spirit of pride will creep in if you're not careful. Amen. Even those that God used, if you're singing, amen, and God blesses the house because you gave him everything you had. Don't you leave thinking it's because you sound better than everybody else. Can I tell you something? Sometimes you, you You've got to sit down and realize it's not the sound. It's not the sound because if God hadn't have stood up there with you, Lord, then the anointing, the lack of the anointing would have exposed all the cracks. Mm -hmm. but, when, 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 but when the anointing is there, y'all y'all getting quiet you ain't got to be able to run all over the scale you may not control your voice amen and boomerang it around the house amen you can stand there amen forgetting the words and everything and God will still bless the house you know why because it's not about you it's about you yielding yourself to God so that he can use you and in using you he'll get the glory out of your life y'all getting quiet here I don't care if you preach I don't care if you teach I don't care if you sing I don't care if you play what Whatever it is that you do, you got to remember it was all God. He's the one that did it. So he gets the glory. God sets him up and he pulls him down. 
We got to remember him. This is why in our everyday lives, we've got to make a habit. Boy, my time is running. In our everyday life, we have to make, and I want you to hear me, we got to make a habit of praising God. See, we got to make that a habit because praising God gives glory to God. It always, amen, has to be aimed towards the heavens. It's not us. So that means even in our everyday lives, it doesn't matter. Amen. And people think they can't talk to God, they can't shout, they can't pray unless they're in church. Listen, every day, I don't care if you're at the house, you've got to make a habit of praising God. If you make it home from work and your car didn't touch another car on the way home, praise him for that. You can make it from point A to point B and then get carjacked. Praise him for that. See, the problem is we got people who don't keep that on their mind. So they don't praise God until they come to church. So all that he's doing in their daily lives goes unrecognized. But we've got to make a habit. Praising God every day. We got to glorify God every day. No matter what it is. Praise God, and, and I had I learned a lesson when me and Lady Danielle first got married. We would go sometime to the gas station, and she said, Herman, bring me, bring me a bag of chips. And I, I'd bring her some chips, and, and even back then, hey, man, I, you know, I, I would sit there and look at it and watch it because she would just do stuff. Hey, man, I, I would sit there, and she'd bow her head and say the longest prayer. Over a bag of chips. And I would sit there and look at that and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say much. I just, now how long, what all can you say to God over chips? But while I was sitting there looking one day, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, in everything. <laughs> in everything. Give thanks. She wasn't praying too much. I just wasn't thankful enough. Boy, y'all getting quiet. You got to make a habit of giving God praise. Give him glory. If you drink out the water fountain and it's cool, give him praise for that. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Oh, thank you. Every time your car fill up and you hear that nozzle click, amen, thank God for a tank full of gas. Amen, if you go home and your kids are there, amen, thank God he kept them safe and brought them home from school. You've got to learn how in everything to give thanks. Because it's all God. Lord, this is how you remain humble. And it's only through humility that we see the true blessings of the Lord flow towards us. Otherwise, God's going to bring us low. And the Bible said that he would. Get me real quick, Luke 14 and 11. I just want you to see it so you'll know where to find it in the scriptures. Write it down. I don't want to just quote it. I want you to know that it's in there and where to find it. Read for whosoever, for whosoever exalted himself, exalted himself. You listen, and let me say this: you got to wait on God, because if you try to do it yourself, you're gonna mess some stuff up. You can't run ahead of God. The Bible said He makes all things beautiful in His time. Hey Amen. You can't outpace God. You've got, listen, because with God, it's not only just about knowing his will. You've got to make sure you line up with his timing because sometimes you know what God got for you, but you got to ask him, is this the right time for me to have it? Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to do? Because he's not only, Lord, could I do it? He's not only preparing it for you. He's preparing you for it. Uh-huh. And some of you want it. And God said, you ain't ready to handle it. It's not that it's a no. It's coming sooner or later. But while it's tarrying, I'm going to work on you. I got to condition you. Y'all ain't saying, and can I talk to somebody here? And you mess up when you try to run ahead of God and get something that you ain't ready to handle yet. So with God, it's about timing too. And so he said, don't run ahead of me and try to get it yourself. Don't exalt yourself. Wait. Uh-huh. 
shall be abased. Uh -huh. And he that humbleth himself, he that humbleth himself, shall be exalted. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you when? In due time. But somebody tonight, God is saying to you, it's just not your time yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just not your time yet. Some of you trying to marry folk, you ready for them, but they ain't ready for you. Lord have mercy. Look at somebody and tell them timing is everything. Time is it. You got to make sure that whenever you get there, you get there at the right time. You trying to push yourself up there. And God said, let me exalt you in due time. Because when you get there, I'll have everything prepared around you so that you don't just get there, but you can stay there. Some of you trying to rush God and make stuff happen for yourself. When God is saying, just humble yourself and wait on me. Because when you get there, every enemy that you would have faced when you got there, I would have eliminated them at that point if you had waited on me but since you exalted yourself I'll use the enemies you didn't give me time to get rid of to bring you back down the side so you're no better the next time around we got proof let me hasten throughout the entirety of scripture that God is not only able but he's willing to bring low those that steal his glory and believe Honestly, these people honestly believe that their stories were written by their own hands. This wasn't the goodness of God. I wrote my own story. I, 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 I paid my own way. We see Uzziah. We don't have to go there. But write it down. Second Chronicles, the 26th chapter. You see it in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died. A lot of folk didn't even know Uzziah was in the Bible. Outside of the book of Isaiah, Uzziah's second chronicles, the 26th chapter, the Bible said Uzziah was a very powerful king. He became king at 16 years old. He started out real good. He started out praying. He started out seeking God like his fathers did. And the Bible said God really blessed him. He had standing armies throughout the country. Amen. The Bible said not only that, but he fought against the Philistines. Uzziah was somebody in his day. And even though the Philistines were a constant nuisance and an enemy and an opposition, amen, to the Israelites, the Bible said that when it came to Uzziah, God helped him fight against the Philistines. He had great victory because God helped him to fight against them. But then the Bible says, but when he was strong, after all that God did for him, they say that Isaiah used catapults. He would break down walls and nobody could resist his power. But when he got strong, the Bible said that his heart was lifted up within him. And one day, I guess he felt empowered because God had blessed him. He went into the temple and decided to make sacrifices and didn't realize that even though he was king, God didn't anoint him as a priest. And you know, that's what pride will do if you're not careful. Pride will have you dipping in areas that you're not anointed. Pride will have you melting in, in, in areas that, 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 that God never anointed you. Hey man, to interact with. God will have you sitting out there trying to tell the pastor what to do. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how in the world somebody ain't never had a church so smart they can tell a pastor what he need to do. The devil is a lie. That's what pride will do. Just because you can excel on your job and hey man, just because you got the front seat, hey man, in your classroom don't mean you can come up in church and tell God, hey man, or God's people how to run the church. You know, pride will do that to you. Pride will have you thinking because you excelled in this area. You don't have to wait on the anointing Hey Amen. You got good ability. You got the ability to do this. Hey Amen. It don't take the anointing. Just walk in your own strength. Walk in your own ability. Walk in your own power and see where it gets you. You know what it did? The Bible said God uh, smote us eye in the forehead with leprosy. And when the priest saw that he had leprosy, they ran him out of the temple. You unclean. You ain't got no business being in here. This man was brought low because of pride. And the Bible said, Isaiah said, when I saw him die, 
helped me to understand God better. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train fit. Boy, y'all done got quiet. God is able to bring us low. Not only Isaiah in, in 2 Chronicles, the 26th chapter, let me hasten, but we see the rich fool in St. Luke, the 12th chapter. You remember the Bible said, just like what we heard in our text, he said, I will say to my soul, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. I have, 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 have gotten such a great harvest. I will tear down barns. I will build bigger barns. I will say to my soul, look at somebody, tell them, stop looking at yourself. You know, it's bad when all we can see is ourselves and we can't see through our own shortcomings to recognize the power of God that moves in our life. The Bible Bible said this man was so full of pride that he was presumptuous. Pride told him, eat, drink, and just enjoy yourself. Because you got a long time to be here. And you know that's what pride is telling a whole lot of people now. That's the reason they're not saved. That's why they're not running to God. Pride is telling them, listen, when you get there, whenever you decide to get saved, he'll be there waiting on you. Go on out there and live your life. Do all that you want to do. And just know that whenever you get through doing whatever you want to do and come back, he's just going to be sitting there waiting on you. And so you got a lot of folk operating in presumption as if they got time and don't even understand that pride causes them to conceive of a time that they may or may not even have. Because this man, the Bible said that night, God said to him, you're a fool. And anybody that does not live to recognize the goodness of God, God is saying that's a fool. Pride will cause you to assume things that are no guarantees. Feeling good in your body. Assuming that you have many years left. So you don't have to acknowledge him today. Don't, 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 don't acknowledge. You don't have to uh, uh, unharden your heart today. He'll be there whenever you get ready for him. Don't worry about it. You have plenty of time. So just, just eat, drink, and be merry. God said this type of person is a fool. Look at all the stuff they're looking at. My goods, my barns, my times. I'll eat, drink, and be I have much goods for many years and didn't even realize that night he was going to hell. Pride will cause you to assume you got more time than you got. Not only that, not only Luke 12, but when you look at Acts, the 12th chapter. Get that, get that for me. I want to read that. Acts 12, 21 through 23. And upon a set day, mm -hmm. Herod, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, Herod put on his royal apparel, sat up under his throne, and made an oration unto them. Made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, uh -huh. It is the voice of a God. God, did you hear Herod? Did you hear what he said? Did, did you hear how he said it? Oh, man, I never heard nobody speak like that. That's not the voice of a man. A man can't speak like that. What we just heard was the voice of a God. That ain't no man. I, I don't know if you were listening like I was listening, but I didn't hear a man. I heard a God speaking to us. The Bible said the people started shouting to Herod. And while he's sitting on his throne with his royal clothes on, he's listening to the people. He prays and glory upon him. This is no man. This is a God. And read what the Bible says. And immediately. And immediately. While they were heaping praise on him. Uh -huh. The angel of the Lord smote him uh -oh. because he gave God not the glory. Why did the angel of the Lord smite him? Because he gave not God the glory. Why did he end up dying? Real. What is that? He gave not God the glory. Because he didn't give God the glory. And what happened to him? And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. This man with royal clothes on, sitting on a throne, is eaten up with worms. And let me say this, you'll notice he never said he was a God. But the people gave him the glory and he didn't give the glory to God. You got to be careful about letting folk pump you up. 
You got, I don't care how good you are and what you do. You better be careful about letting folk put all that glory on you. I don't care how good a person preach. I don't care how good they sing. You can't let people pump you up to the place that you don't give God the glory. I don't care what they, y'all ain't saying nothing here. It's the anointing. It's not you. It's not your gift. It's the anointing of God and you've got to give God the glory. And even if you are operating in a gift, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Gifts and callings are without rip. Who do you think blessed you with that voice? Let me hurry up and get out of here so I can show you what happens when God humbles a man. He accepted the voice of the people and received the glory that was only due to the king of kings. It almost reminds me of, 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 of Revelation, the 19th chapter. I, I can't remember the verse, but it talked, amen, in Revelation 19 about John when he saw the angel that came to give him a message. And the, I think it's the 10th verse. He talked about how that he was so, so enraptured in that moment that he fell down and he began to worship him. And the angel said, hey, what are you doing? Uh uh, get up, get up off your. Nah, don't worship me. I'm, 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 I'm a servant just like you are. I, I don't deserve that glow. See, you got to learn. I don't care how people try to make you something that God didn't call you to be. I don't care if they try to pump you up. You got to remember that God is always looking. He's always jealous. He's always a consuming fire. And he will not give his glory to another. And John allowed his emotion to overcome his reason because the situation was so great. And when he got down, the angel said, Get up off your knees. Oh, don't, don't worship me. Oh, God, and I don't care. Hey, Amen. I don't care how good your pastor is. Are you hearing me? And I'm not just talking about you here. I'm talking about people all over the country. It doesn't matter how great he is. I thank God for good leadership. But now your pastor ain't God. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Hey, Amen. You don't worship no man. Hey, Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. You thank God for the man. Hey, Amen. You honor the man. And in honoring him, you give glory to the God that he said, I'll give you pastors after my own heart. So when you thank God for it, amen, you are giving him the glory. But we ain't worshiping nobody. Let me, let me hasten. When you look at Daniel, the fourth chapter, the Bible says, this is that same Nebuchadnezzar. He's been a great man. Nebuchadnezzar, Jeremiah, Tried to tell the people, listen, God said he's going to come through. He's going to sweep this land. He's going to take everything in his wake. Don't resist him. God said it's his will. Go with him because if you resist, he's going to slay you. And you'll go as servants. Hey, man, he's going to burn these. Open those gates and let him in because God's going to use him to bring judgment on the rebellious people. This was that same Nebuchadnezzar that, 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 that took Zedekiah and killed his sons and, and put his eyes out so that the last thing that he would see was his sons being killed. This Nebuchadnezzar, the same one amen, that had the Hebrew boys thrown into the fire, that watched God deliver them with a high hand. This same Nebuchadnezzar, y'all getting quiet tonight. This is the same one that had a dream that nobody could tell him what it was. He didn't even disclose it and said, I need you to tell me what it was I dream. And the magician said, listen king, nobody would ever ask anybody uh, to tell him what's on your mind without you telling us first give us clue he said I'm not telling you what I dream but if your magic is real you'll tell me the stuff I dreamed about nobody could do it but they said there's one Daniel and the Bible says that Daniel came and interpreted the king's dream the king knew that God's hand was on him he exalted him to the second ruler in the kingdom and the Bible said he was there when the Hebrew boys came out of the fire. And he said, listen, these young men serve the God of heaven. He, he's mighty to save. He can do anything. And now, here it is, he has another dream. Somebody say another dream. Uh, uh, God gives him a dream. And in this dream, 
He sees a tree that has grown mighty. It's grown tall. The Bible said it reached up to the heavens. And this tree, the Bible said, was so broad that it gave shade and shadow to the animals from the heat of the sun. It was so massive and so expansive that all the birds of the heaven took shelter in the tree and it fed every man, the Bible said. God says in the dream, he sends an angel and he says, cut the tree down and, and, and shake the leaves off and, and scatter the fruit, but leave a stump. The Bible said Nebuchadnezzar was so troubled he called for the wise men and said, you got to tell me what this is all about. And nobody could do it, but, but here, comes, here comes Daniel again. Daniel to the rescue all over again. And the Bible says that Daniel, Daniel said, King, I wish this was about somebody else, but that tree that you saw in your dream, it's you. God had blessed you. He's made you uh, expansive. He's grown you. Your, your height has reached up to the heavens. Uh, look at your kingdom. It is so wide that it gives shade and shelter and it gives food to everybody. He said, but God said you've got to be careful because the pride of your heart will cause your downfall. And when he says, heal the tree down, he says, king, God will bring you down if you're not careful. He said seven times, seven years will pass if you're not careful and if you don't change your ways. He even says to him, listen, mend your ways, do right, work righteousness so that this thing won't come to pass. But you know what the Bible says? Within 12 months. And you wonder sometimes, why did it take 12 months? Why did it take 12 months? Proverbs 29 and 1 says, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall be suddenly destroyed and back without remedy. Proverbs 11 and 2 says, When pride cometh, then cometh shame. And it takes 12 months. Could it have been that God gave Nebuchadnezzar 12 months to mend his ways? Did he give him 12 months to change the way he thought? Did he give him 12 months uh, to renew his mind and spiritual things? 12 months later, he's walking through the kingdom, the palace on the roof. The Bible said he spake and said, look at this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. And it may take a while. But God's going to reckon with pride. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 says, and because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, the heart of men is fully set in them to do evil because God didn't get you. You know, sometimes people can hear it and it'll shake them, but they soon forget about the warning of God and forget that warning comes before this. The Bible said while he was talking, a voice came and said, King, to you it's spoken. The kingdom is departed from you. They shall drive you from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as an oxen. And in that moment, this man's mind was taken from him. Can you imagine a king as great as Nebuchadnezzar? That conquered everybody. And now all of a sudden, his mind has changed. Now he can think like a king. He's a beast and he's eating grass. The Bible said they shall cause you to eat grass. That means they kept him somewhere. Once his mind left him, they put him somewhere. Maybe so that the rest of the kingdom and the subjects would know what bad shape the king was in. They put him over. And, and, and I believe it's Daniel 5 and 21. Daniel said that he had his dwelling among the asses. They caused them to eat grass. Look at him, got a king, and they keeping him away from the people. And every now and then, they, he, he don't have an appetite for steak and, and lobster. He doesn't have an appetite for pheasant under glass and, and, and Chateau Brion. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have an appetite for the good stuff. You know what he won't eat? Grass. This man has lost it. The Bible said not only that, but he's such a beast that his fingernails grew out like eagle's claws. And with
when the dew of heaven set on him, his hair was like eagle's feathers. He thought your hair was frizzy. His, his hair got matted up. And the Bible said he was out there seven years. And let me say this to you. If God's got to do it, he know how to get the pride out of you too. Oh yeah, you keep, keep boasting about what you got. God will stomp the pride out of you. Keep bragging about your job, looking down on everybody else. Keep doing that. God will take your job from you. You keep bragging, keep doing crazy stuff. God knows how to humble you. Boy, y'all ain't saying nothing here. You keep looking around, amen, thinking that you better than everybody else because of how you look. God knows how to humble us. Y'all done got quiet. Uh, it ain't the clothes you wear. You, you keep letting clothes make you full of pride. God will blow you up like a balloon. And all them clothes that you were so full of pride over, now you're going to come to church and see everybody else wearing it because you'll never get back in that stuff again. You better stop. Because he's willing to do it. The Bible says seven years passed. Let me close this Bible. Seven years passed. And I love what the Bible says. I believe it's verse 34 if I'm not mistaken. The Bible says, then he looked up. <laughs> oh, then he looked up. Thank God that even though God had to chop him down, the one thing that I can be honored to read. God said, leave a stump. Sometimes God will chop you down. Oh God, and some of us in here tonight, we, we can testify, God had to chop some of us down. But aren't you glad he left a stump? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm glad that even if God got to chop us down, he said, I'll leave a stump. You know what that means? That means that God will come back and deal with you again. If he was through with you, he'd have just rooted you all the way up out the ground. Thank God he cut you off, but he left a stump. That means that if you learn your lesson, he'll restore you. He'll grow you again. This man said, I'm in a bad way, but then the Bible says he looked up to the heavens. And that's what some of us need to do tonight. Look at somebody and tell them, stop looking at yourself. You'll never even understand how fulfilling life with Christ is until you learn to look to him. Until you stop looking inward, trying to find the answer for everything. And until you start looking up, how look to the hills. Because that's, that's where my help comes from. It, it wasn't me. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But I will remember the name of the Lord. It wasn't me. And it wasn't until he looked up. The Bible said his reasoning came back to him. And when you learn how to look to him, oh God, if he got to take you off your job for a while and have you out there scratching and scrimping and trying to wonder how you going to pay your cell phone after you bragged about all the stuff you had and all this, now you're trying to figure out how to pay your cell phone bill. At the moment, you start to look up. When you learn to acknowledge him. Oh, you were coming to church when the bus was coming to get you. Oh, you got a car and now folk ain't seeing you at church because you out there letting all the, uh, all the folk in the hood, hey man, see how good you doing now. God will take that from you. Uh -huh, you rolling through that trying to let everybody see how, how good you doing that. God will let the whole wheel fall off your car right there in front of their house. Amen. Boy, y'all getting quiet. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody saying nothing. Look at it. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking here. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I done show sure learned my lesson. I remember years and years and years ago. <clears throat> I went and bought me this car. And I went 
and I, I, I had some wheels put on it. And, and boy, I mean these wheels. I loved them. I loved the way it looked. And, and, and folk would let their window down when I was at the, at the light. Hey, what, what kind of car is that? What? The, and, what the, and you know how, how you are. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Pray for me. I remember one day after I got it, I, I was fresh after they brought the car back from having it worked on. And I went up, I went up to my sister's school and I called. I said, oh, I'm outside. <laughs> she came out and she was standing in front of the school and I'm pulling up real slow. <laughs> oh, this car. And all of a sudden I heard, I didn't hit the curb and scrape those rims up there. <laughs> Oh, don't embarrass me in front of everybody out there. Those that walk in pride, he's able to abase you. You keep thinking you something because of what you got. It's not what you got. It's who you are that makes you significant. And it wasn't until he looked up that reason and returned to him, stand to your feet. And he said, now I know that God does whatever he determines to do. It's not me. I don't have a right to this stuff. I've just been blessed by the hand of God. And brothers and sisters, you don't have a right to it. You've just been blessed by the hand of God. And you got to learn how to give him the glory. Because when God humbles a man, Sometimes he can take you lower than you ever thought you'd go. But if he got to stomp the pride out of you, he's able and he's willing to do it. And somebody tonight, maybe you're in that season where God have had to bring you low. You thought it was you. You didn't need him. You had a degree. Your mind told you, I don't need God. <laughs> I got a good job. I got benefits. I got good looks. I, I don't need God. Why I got to wait on God for a husband, for a wife. Looking like this, I ain't got to wait on. Me, God? You're foolish. Those that exalt themselves. He's able to bring you low. Why don't you humble yourself? If the Lord has put you in a great reset, <laughs> he done took you back to scratch. Somebody say, where is scratch? I don't know. <laughs> but you starting over from scratch. Wherever scratch is, that's where you going. And maybe somebody here tonight, God has sent you back to scratch. I come to tell you, just like Nebuchadnezzar, if you'll just look up. Not at you, because you messed up too many times. You're not smart enough. You're not cute enough. You're not rich enough. All things come of thee, O oh God. And of thine own have we given thee. If you learn to look up, I come to tell you he's a restorer. Yes, he is. He said, even though I had to cut you down, I left a stump because I always intended to come back and visit you again. I just wanted to know, have you, look at somebody and ask him, have you learned your lesson yet? Have you learned your lesson? Because if you've learned your lesson, Then the stuff you try to give yourself. Look to me. I'll give it to you. You went after it. But he said all you had to do was seek the kingdom. And it would have come. But you went after that stuff. You didn't want me. You wanted what I could give you. You wanted the stuff you could hold in your hand. You wanted something to make you look better. But I wanted to give you something that will make you better. It's not what you got. It's who you are that makes you so special and it's sad if you're standing here thinking that a car made you who you are 
that your face or your shape, your hips make you who you are. It's a sad person that looks at the house and the neighborhood they live in and the amount of money that you got in the bank that makes you who you are. But there are folk that don't have what you have who are a whole lot happier than you. It's not what it's about. You got money and don't have no peace. They don't have a dime, but they always got a smile on their face and an encouraging word for you. They found out what life is all about. Every head bowed. If there's somebody that... If there's somebody here tonight that's not saved, I want you to come. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to come. Step out of that row, step into that aisle, and make your way to this altar. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Come on. Come on. Glory belongs to you. Come on, they're coming. Is there another? All of oh my come on is there another if so you can come come on come on you deserve it hallelujah oh they're coming come on come on is there another is there another is there come on that's it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Is there another? If so, come now. God bless you, young lady. Come. My hallelujah. Come on, that's it. They're coming. Somebody lift those hands and just tell the Lord. My hallelujah. Get them, they're coming. Come on, come on. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. My, hallelujah. my hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody lift your hands and say, You deserve it. Come on, tell the Lord, You deserve it. Come on, give him glory. You deserve it, Lord. Come on, tell him you deserve it. All of the glory, my hallelujah. You, you, you. Oh, Lord, you deserve it. Those of you at this altar. While your hands are lifted, come on, lift your hands to him. He's so mindful. The Bible calls him just and faithful to forgive us of all of our sins. That's the promise that he's made to us. And tonight, if you're tired of trying to do it your own way and you're ready to turn your life over into his hands, I want you, while your hands are lifted, I want you to talk to him. He's listening. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter your background, how bad you've messed up. If you call him, he'll answer you. While your hands are lifted, talk to him and say, Lord, I'm so sorry for everything that I've done that wasn't like you. Everything that didn't please you. Tell him, Lord, I'm sorry for doing it my own way. But tonight I turn my life over to you. Make my heart your home. Ask him, Lord, cleanse me. And baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Come on now, you got to make a commitment to him. Tell him, Lord, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Come on, if you believe it, that's him listening. Come on, believe it. Believe that he hears you. And just start surrendering your whole life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I pray tonight for these that stand at this altar, I pray that even now the anointing of the Holy Ghost would rest on them. I pray that you'll give them the benefit of your presence right where they stand. 
Father, touch and cleanse them. Make them new. Oh, God, baptize them tonight with the power of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. As the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And we thank you for it and give you praise in the name of Jesus the Christ. Come on, if you believe it, give God the praise. Somebody praise the Lord for what he's doing at this altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Somebody say you deserve it. Somebody tell him, tell him, tell him. You, you deserve it. Come on and give him glory. Yeah, tell him, Lord, you deserve it. Come on, would you take a moment and just praise him? Let's make a habit out of this. You saved me, you raised me. You deserve it, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the benefit of your sons and daughters that stand tonight having a need, I pray you'd walk these aisles, move across every road, touch and honor them as they honor you with their faith tonight. I know that you can do anything. You can, you can, you can, you can. You can do it. You can heal. You can make a way out of no way. You can restore. You can give peace of mind tonight. And I thank you for it. I praise and glorify you for meeting each and every one of us at the point of our need. And Father, we honor you now with the praise. Let's do your name. Somebody clap those hands now. Clap, clap. Clap and honor him. Let's receive our announcements as we prepare to do.